Hello, this is Lazarus at Telecom Tech, where telecom and networking technologies are simply explained. Today, we'll be simply explaining how to configure VXLAN on a pair of Cisco Nexus switches. If you like my content so far and you're interested in seeing more networking and telecom technologies simply explained, then please subscribe now to the channel. If you like this video, make sure to click that thumbs up button. VXLAN is a technology that can be used to overcome the limitations of more traditional Ethernet VLANs defined by the IEEE 802.1Q standard. If you haven't already done so, take a look at my previous videos on VXLAN that describe the technology and how it works. It'll be helpful for you to further understand today's video. You can find links to those videos in the description below. So what are we going to do today? Well, we're going to create the following topology between two Cisco Nexus switches. Now we're choosing to do this on Nexus switches because these are the most commonly used Cisco switches for data centers. VXLAN is supported on other Cisco devices, such as some 9000 series catalyst switches, as well as some 3000 series devices using the appropriate iOS XE versions. But Nexus switches are the predominant models used for data centers. Now the logic behind the configuration is similar for other models as well, with just some small differences in the syntax. Now these two switches here are connected to the underlay network, but we won't deal with the underlay network today. We assume that VTEP1 is able to reach VTEP2 from this IP address to this one over that underlay network. We're going to configure these switches so that this PC1 will be able to share the same broadcast domain or network segment with this PC2 here. Now, remember in previous videos, we mentioned that it is possible to use various technologies for the control plane of VXLAN. These technologies help one VTEP find the other VTEP to which our destination device is connected. In our configuration today, we'll create what is known as static ingress replication. Now, what this fancy term essentially means is that any broadcast or multicast traffic that reaches this VTEP will essentially be sent only to a statically configured list of other VTEPs within the same VXLAN segment. Thus, any ARP requests, for example, that are received by one VTEP will be sent only to those VTEPs in our statically configured list. We're going to configure this list. But in our case, our list will only have one entry. Now to start off with, we'll first need to configure the VTEPs such that their interfaces connected to the underlay network are correctly set up. To do this, we can issue the following commands. Here we can see in VTEP1 that we are configuring the Ethernet01 interface. The no switch port command converts the port to a layer three port, just like we would have on a router. And once that is done, then we can assign an IP address to that port. We can figure the same thing on the underlay port of VTEP2 as well. Now these two VTEPs should be reachable to each other over layer three over that underlay network. In other words, they should be able to ping each other. Now VXLAN on these switches requires a loopback interface to be configured on each device. Actually, VXLAN will use those loopback interfaces to actually terminate the VXLAN tunnels themselves. And this is done for various reasons, including stability and high availability. So let's configure two loopback interfaces, one for each of the VTEPs. For simplicity, we'll use the addresses 1.1.1.1 and 2.2.2.2. Now these loopback interfaces remain on the underlay network. And so we must ensure that we have configured routing such that 1.1.1.1 is able to ping 2.2.2.2. Now I won't show that configuration here, but let's assume that connectivity has been established between these two loopbacks over the underlay network. Next, we have to configure the overlay network on our VTEPs. First, we'll create the VXLAN Network Identifier, or VNI. To do so, we go to VTEP1 and we create a local VLAN that exists on this VTEP. 
We associate that VLAN with VNI6501 using this VN segment command. Next, we simply assign Ethernet 02, which is the port on which PC1 is connected, to VLAN 10. So now, essentially, we've mapped VNI6501 to the local VLAN 10. Now remember, VLAN 10 here has only local significance. On another VTEP, you may map another VLAN to VNI6501, or you may even map VLAN 10 to another VNI completely. This VLAN has no significance outside of this particular VTEP. Now we configure VTEP2 in a similar way. Next, we must create what in previous videos we called the VXLAN interface. Now in Nexus terminology, this is called the Network Virtual Interface, even though the abbreviation is actually NVE. Now some Cisco documentation doesn't make this clear as to why the letter is different, but it is likely that NVE comes from the term Network Virtualization Edge. So the VTEP is considered the edge of the VXLAN virtualized network, so that may make sense, but I digress. So let's go to VTEP1 and configure this NVE interface. And let me explain each of these commands that are being input here. First, we start off by entering the NVE configuration mode. The interface NVE1 command creates that NVE interface and you enter into NVE configuration mode. Next, we enable the interface with the no shutdown command. Then we indicate that the tunnel source or the termination point of our VXLAN tunnel will be that loopback interface that we created, loopback zero. We then state what VNIs we will be tunneling through this NVE. We can indicate more than one, but for now we're just setting up VNI6501. The next command now tells the VTEP to send any broadcast or multicast traffic, such as that of an ARP request, for example, only to our statically configured list of VXLAN peers. And finally, the last command tells our local VTEP the list of those peer IPs for remote VTEPs. And in our list, we only have one VTEP. We indicate this by using the peer IP address of our remote VTEP, which is, in our case, the loopback zero interface of that VTEP, which is 2.2.2.2. Again, you can have multiple peers created here, but in our case, we only have one. Now, to ensure that all this works, we need to create the counterpart configuration on VTEP2. And this is what it looks like here. Now, everything is set up in the exact same way, except here we have a peer IP address of 1.1.1.1, which is the loopback interface of VTEP1. And that's it. The configuration is done. The static VLAN tunnel has been defined between these two loopback interfaces. So when PC1 initially wants to send something to PC2, it'll start off by sending an ARP request. And it will use the configuration that we created to place the appropriate VNI in the VXLAN header that is appended. And it will send that ARP request, which is broadcast, only to those VTEPs in our peer list. In our case, we only have one. So it goes to VTEP2. This is achieved by placing the appropriate destination IP in the underlay IP header here. And that destination IP is 2.2.2.2, which is the loopback of VTEP2 on which our VXLAN tunnel terminates. Now that ARP request will reach VTEP2 and PC2 in turn will respond with an ARP reply. And that ARP reply using much the same mechanisms will come back to PC1. And in that whole process, not only does PC1 populate its ARP table, but the VTEPs have now created in their own local memory the mappings between the destination MAC addresses of the PCs and the VTEP peer IPs. So now VTEP1 knows that if it receives a frame with a destination MAC equal to that of PC2, it will put in the destination IP address that of VTEP2, which is the 2.2.2.2 address in the underlay IP header. So that was the configuration of VXLAN between two Nexus switches using a static list of remote VTEPs. 
I hope you found this video useful and if you have, please click that thumbs up button. If you'd like me to address other related topics, feel free to let me know in the comments below and please subscribe to get updates to newly published videos. I'm Lazarus at Telecom Tech. I hope this video has been helpful for you and I'd like to thank you for watching.